What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we got a bunch of new reveals from OPO8 that we need to be having a little bit of a look at. There are a bunch of cards that have been revealed. And some of these, well, you need to know about all of these. But some of these could end up being rather impactful indeed. Sound like a plan? Excellent. So let's start off with a pair of cards, shall we say, that are trying to make Carrot good. And actually, just very quickly before we do that, this Friday, 7 p.m. UK time, just like last week, that is the 26th of April, we are going to be doing another box break over on Whatnot. Use the code whatnot.com slash invite slash the Wossie. Come chat some one piece of us, pick up some packs, get some free credit with my invite code and open some OPO5. Have some fun. So yeah, that's tomorrow. But today, we're going to talk about some cards that help out Carrot. We start off with Wanda. Now, I kind of want Carrot to be good. I think Carrot is fun. I do not think Carrot is the best of the leaders in OPO8. I've been pretty clear about that. But I think the Minx as a group are pretty cool, honestly. And I would like it if they could be good. Wanda is your generic searcher. One cost, 2,000 power, counter plus 1,000, don't play it at the top 5 cards of your deck. Find a Minx card other than Wanda, put it into your hand, put the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. We've seen this a million times. We know these kind of cards are good. We know that Charlotte Pudding is good for big mum cards. We know that Nami is good for red straw hats. We've seen this a million times. So we don't need to spend too much time talking about this. The deal is very simple. If Carrot is good... If Minx are good, this is going to be a stable in the card as your generic searcher. And if not, they're not. So do we have any cards that might make Minx good? Well, we've got a stage, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the stage, Zoe. Although I'm going to be honest with you, right? Just means elephant. This is Japanese for elephant. And I'm sorry, but I just think a stage called elephant is way more fun. But... Is this actually worth playing? Well, it's pretty good. It's a free cost stage, which isn't the cheapest. But we've got activate main, rest this stage. If your leader is Minx, activate one of your Don. So you pay free Don initially, but then you get a Don every turn extra to use. It gives you an extra Don. Now, it's not strictly an extra Don, because, of course, it won't give you, like, 11 Don. It means you can reuse one Don, which is not quite the same as having an extra Don, but it's not a million miles away. But, basically, you pay free, and this is going to come back to you over time. Obviously, you can do the whole mulligan thing with stages, and we've seen this on Agashima Island, whereby you will mulligan if you don't have it in your hand to begin the game. It does at least give you a better chance to start with it. Because I know this isn't a turn one play, it's for free Don. But this really does seem like a card you want in play nice and early. Getting a Don back every turn is great. But there's actually more. Because up to one of your Minx, you activate at the end of your turn. At the end of your turn, activate one of your Minx. Set one of your Minx to active. Now, there are two reasons why this is really good. Firstly, just protects one of your characters. Because the rule in One Piece is that you can only attack rested characters, generally. And so if you then activate your character, then the character is no longer rested. And that means that they cannot be attacked. That's good. But the other way this comes in here is with blockers. Because essentially you attack on your turn, but then you're rested. And, oh, that's really annoying because now I don't get to do the whole blocking thing. But then you activate at the end of your turn, and then all of a sudden, you are now a blocker. And a couple of days ago, I would have said, oh, but we don't have any Minx blockers. But we actually do now. We've got Pedro. Pedro has been shown off in the OPO8 reveal cycle. I believe it's the only one from OPO8, you know, Minx blocker. And although we've had Minx previously, firstly, none of them are blockers. And secondly, most of them aren't green. Some of them are, but most of them aren't. But we've got Pedro. And activating Pedro at the end of your turn is pretty cool. Because Pedro is a blocker, but also on KO you get to choose one of the following things. Either you rest one of your opponent's Don, or you KO a rested character that is six cost or less. And bearing in mind your leader Carrot has got an activate main once per turn. If you've got a Minx character out, you get to rest a five cost or lower of your opponents. So you attack with Pedro... And then you use this stage to activate 
Pedro at the end of your turn, and then you block and get KO'd and KO one of your opponent's characters that you rested with your leader, and it is starting to come together. This whole mink stuff is starting to make a lot more sense. And as a side note, for the first skill to get your Don, you have to rest it. The stage. But the second skill that activates one of your characters is just a flat end of your turn. You don't need to do anything for that to kick in. So that is going to be a standard static skill, which is a very, very good thing. I like it. But wait! That might not be quite enough Minx for you. Don't worry. I got one more Minx. We have an event card here. We've got Electric Luna. And as a trigger, you get to rest one of your opponent's characters. Actually sneaky good here. Because it's any character. There's no restrictions. Just rest one of your opponent's characters. And then obviously there's combos and stuff like Pedro, which is lovely. But as a main... All of your opponent's rested characters, with a cost of 7 or less, do not become active during your opponent's next refresh phase. This is brilliant. Absolutely love this. It's only a free cost, which is not that expensive. And sure, it doesn't hit 8, 9, or 10 costs, which is annoying. But... Green have got a bunch of stuff you can use to rest your opponent. Like your leader will rest, assuming you're playing Minx. Your leader will rest one of your opponent's characters. And then they don't become active? If you've got enough resting going on here, this is absolutely full on, flat out, phenomenal because then they don't become active. And look, this is good for Carrot and it's good for Minx, but this is just generally a very, very strong green card. And yes, a bunch of you are probably going to look at this and be like, hang on a second, wasn't Birdcage a thing? Yes. Yes, it was. That was a five-cost stage that if your leader is Don Quixote or Flamingo, all characters of cost of five or less do not become active in yours and your opponent's refresh phase. And then you got the end of your turn. If you got 10 Don, KO all rest of characters cost to 5 or less and trash the stage. Yeah, that's a bit different. If you're just trying to turn off your opponent's characters for a turn, it's free cost rather than 5. And it's only your opponent, not you. It's not as good at Birdcage in some things, obviously. It's not the same card. But as an I want a cheap way to turn off a bunch of my opponent's characters, it is... And because it gets 7 cost or less rather than 5 cost or less and only your opponents, not yours. Yeah. There are reasons to like this card. It does not just need to be for Minx. And it's good for Minx, don't get me wrong. But this is not a card which exists just for Minx. This can be for a whole bunch. I adore this, ladies and gentlemen. I think this card is brilliant. I think the stage is really good. And Fire and a Generic Searcher is not the most exciting card out there, but you are going to need it if you're going to be playing a Minx deck. And all of a sudden, between this trio of cards, Minx got a lot better. And it is something I tell you a lot on this channel, especially when it comes to new leaders. Be careful trying to judge new leaders when we haven't seen enough of the set. Because generally what tends to happen is, over time, we get more and more cards revealed from the same set. And then we turn around and we're like, oh. Yeah, now all of a sudden that card is a lot different to how I thought it might be. And it's not a Minx, but we're going to finish off with a non-Minx card. Because I don't know, we need to talk about it somewhere, alright? We need to have a talk about it somewhere. We've got South Bird. And we've got a one-cost yellow bird. One-cost 2,000 power, counter plus 1,000. And on play, you look at the top seven cards of your deck, play an upper yard, and then put the rest of the cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. And you might be thinking, hang on a second, Wossy. Isn't upper yard that stage we got a little while ago? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is. Upper yard is a stage we got in OPO 5, I believe. The on play, look at the top five cards of your deck, find a Sky Island, add it to your hand, put the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So, it's not a generic searcher, but it's a generic searcher that finds a stage which is a generic searcher. Which seems like a really weird roundabout way of doing it, but yeah. Um, 
that, that that's what we've got. It's a one cost 2,000 power counter plus 1,000. And when you play it, you get to just play an upper yard, which will then go and get your Sky Island. Which, which again, that seems a little bit weird and round the houses. But you know what? Fine. It also means it's not always that reliable. Because if you don't find an upper yard, it's actually kind of annoying. But remember, I showed you Wiper the other day. That on play, looks at the top four cards of your deck. Puts an upper yard into your hand. And then plays an upper yard. Very important. South Birds, you play an upper yard that you find in the top... How many cards? Seven cards of your deck. Which is a lot, to be fair. Whereas YP, look at the top four cards. And then you can add one. But if you've already got one in your hand, you can play that instead. Very similar kind of thing. Basically, they want you to play upper yard in this set. They're giving us a bunch of cards that very specifically help us to find upper yard. Is that weirdly specific? Yes. But you know what? Why not? Upper Yard's a good card, and this is going to help with consistency. This is a card it would have been great to look at with Wiper, but I already showed you Wiper the other day. So I couldn't really show that to you again. Well, not, not for the first time. So I figured, look, let's chat some minks and chuck this in on the end. And seriously, I was not that excited about Carrot when I first showed her to you. I didn't think Minx was looking particularly hot in this set. Now, I'm changing my mind. I'm thinking Minx could be pretty gosh darn cool. But I want to know what you think. I want to know if you're excited about Minx. I want to know if you're excited about Carrot. I want to know anything you want to tell me. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.